Well, hey, everybody, I'm Tim, and welcome to Cigars Daily Live, coming to you from sunny Phoenix, Arizona, with a kickoff to an episode that should reshape the way we all think about our favorite blends, which happens every time you get a great recommendation from someone that you know and care about. I've literally had this experience this week. Last night, I'm sitting in my house, and I've just got some turf put into my backyard. Beautiful fake grass that doesn't require any water and my dogs can't dig it. It's the best thing in the entire world. And I'm smoking with my wife and she had me smoke a cigar and it just absolutely rocked my world. And that's our hope is to take your palates to new places tonight. And so tonight we've got for you some very special staff picks. Whoa, whoa. These are Ooh. the best blends around the HQ. You know what the hype cigars are. You just got to look around the internet for that. You know what cigars they're telling you you should smoke, but these are the ones we have been smoking. We've been enjoying the hell out of. We're going to share some of those with you tonight. Of course, my name is Tim. I'm the host of this show, but all of you watching at home, you're the co-host. Your comments and questions will drive this episode down the road because God knows this vehicle wouldn't have a motor if we didn't do it that way. <laughs> uh, of course, helping me run this show behind the camera is Billy the Kid and and then more Southerner, El Ray Del Terrence. I do declare that this is going to be a great show tonight. Look do, at you go, man. Do you know how long people have been asking to do a staff picks episode? Yeah, Probably yes, about a, yeah, Probably yeah. About a for a long time. Yeah. It's a big night. For a long time. And and I'm uh, I'm glad we could finally deliver Yes. That is one thing we do, all right? We're like you doing the project your wife asked you to do. <laughs> you're, you're probably sitting in a room looking at that project right now, half finished in the corner. Eventually, you'll get around to it. And you know what? We know you will because we do eventually as well. All right, drop all your cigar comments and questions down below. Uh, lots of good stuff to chew through tonight. I got some headlines. All my headlines are good news tonight. So good, I'm happy good. about that. Got some amazing cigars to share with you guys. Terrence, you should have like eight of them there. Uh, I just yes, want to make I sure do. you've got everything freaking uploaded because yeah, yeah, yeah. I got Tim one, Tim two, Billy one, Billy two, Ryan one, Ryan two, Terrence one, Terrence two. We got eight. All right. That's eight. All right. That's very, very good. All right. Billy is scouring for the best comments that there are. Uh, oh, uh, no, Reynoso. no, no, -y? no, no way. No way. That's a sweet ass hat. It is a sweet ass hat. I got it at a truck stop, actually. <laughs> Hold what on a second. You do Why were you? Yeah. What were you doing at the truck stop? You're not so, a trucker. What did you do to earn it, by the way? <laughs> I gave the person money in their like hat. <laughs> That's what we're calling it. Is this what we're calling it now? Money? Okay. <laughs> all, right. Uh, all right. All right. Yeah, it was right. a sales yeah. transaction. All right. Uh, let's keep cruising. Oh, my gosh. Do you guys see that my camera is like angled? Like what happened to my camera? It's like an earthquake happened to it. Billy, will you take a comment so I can straighten out my camera for the love? Oh, yes. All right, yeah, let's, let's is, get this taken care of, Billy. This is from Rooster. Evening, everyone. Punishing myself with... Uh... Terrence, help me out on this one. Who, Havana? Punisher? Punisher tonight and follow it with a Hoya de Nicaragua Dark Corojo. Ooh, yeah. I've not had the Punisher, have you? I haven't. I've, I'm not very familiar with that brand, but I do like that that Hoya. That the Hoya is, is good. I've had the Hoya. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. That should be better. If you put it, yeah, thank you. That's good. That looks good. All right. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> when we say staff picks, we really mean the people in this room are the only ones who do anything with this show. It's not like we have a stagehand running around. He's like, what do you guys need? Some coffee? <laughs> nope. We just got Terrence who gives us money in exchange for services. And or a hat. <laughs> okay. All right. Hat. Uh, let's course. go. <laughs> I want to grab some more comments from the fine people. Oh my God. There's a cigar right there. All right, Billy. What do we got in the comments, my good friend? This comment right here is coming from Scott Young. Evening. Does anyone have recommendations for an electric? It's going to be all Southern accents tonight, by the way. Uh, for electric humidors, roughly 150 to 300 sticks of dynamite. <laughs> um, so, all right, let's talk about electric humidors. Uh, we've got some experience with some brands around the room. Now you guys have got some at home. Billy's yes. isn't a brand. There's no brand associated with yours. Well, it is. It's a hand-me-down of a hand-me-down. It's a hand-me-down of a hand-me-down and it's a wine cabinet. What is the cabinet brand? 
Kevin uh, that day. Uh, <laughs> not very impressive. It's not good enough. Or something. Oh, okay. That's cute. All right. So, Terrence, what are you using at home? At home, I have a Need 148 liter. I uh, have two 320 gram 65% Boda packs. I'm running about. Actually, right now, my humidity is a little bit high. It's at 63% compared to the 58 it was a few months ago. But oh, wow. I'm not complaining. Uh, I'm still not having any cracking issues or any burn issues. But right now, I have about 150 sticks in there, and I still oh, have room for a lot more. So I've been, I like this year, I've seen more humidor companies coming out of the woodworks than ever before, specifically emailing me saying, hey, will you review our humidor? And so uh, Arctic Star, Need One, New Air, I do. do, if I do, if I do. And then there's one sitting right out there, right outside that wall that I'm looking at over there. It's in like a, it's in like a wooden crate. It's actually yes. a cabinet humidor. Uh, and I'll talk more about that brand when I actually review the thing. Uh, my, you know, and oh, we, did we say new air? Did I mm -hmm. say new air? You didn't say King Chi. King Chi. <laughs> uh, I like all the brands that are out there and I don't know if, if I could recommend, just recommend one over uh, all the others. Yeah. Um, Ooh, yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to start that one for you, Billy. They all uh, do great work, I think. Yeah. So I, it depends on what you're looking for a humidor to do. Like I like the Arctic star. That's what I use in my office because for a cabinet humidor that holds 150 to you know 250, maybe 300 sticks. If you stack them in there, keep them in, in bundles. Uh, that one has a built in humidification system. For me, that's a really high value. I want like the thing to just regulate itself versus having to try to get it like dialed in. You know, you put your 70% Bova to pack in there and the thing sits at 73% or, or, you know, it just doesn't do it exactly right. I want the whole thing to just kind of monitor itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then those things tend to cost more as well as the ones that heat and cool. It's just, you know, if you're just looking for one that basically keeps your cigars from going over on temperature, so it would be a cooling unit and, and, holds its humidity really well. Uh, Need One does a great job. Like those will just absolutely slay. Uh, and then King Chi, I, I like their humidors a lot as well. Although people have told me they've had issues getting a hold of customer service with King Chi. Oh. Which is... Well, all you did was review the actual humidor, not their uh, company practices. Yes. No, I have not reviewed their company practices. <laughs> I wonder how, I wonder if I did that. I wonder if I just did a video where I emailed all the customer service from every humidor manufacturer. I wonder how many of them, how long it would take to get and then back. just come back. and like, well, these suck. These are all bad numbers. And then, uh, they probably wouldn't send me any more to review. I wonder, <laughs> maybe I'll have to do that. Maybe I should do that. Eh, eh. Yeah, I'm always looking to bring people the most relevant information there is. Yeah. No consequences I'm... be damned. I say, damn those consequences. We'll get Terrence another glass of wine. Okay. <laughs> get him another glass of wine and a root beer and a laptop and let him go to town and a christmas episode <laughs> a doctor never what was that again where we mixed what was it corona and disarano oh my gosh uh, all right hey, Billy. you've upset a fan base okay uh -oh. well that's fine we've done that before um where is ryan oh, it's Aaron uh, oh there Hi. he is he's right there you're blocking the decoration ryan <laughs> Thank you. All right. We decorated oh. that. We decorated oh. over there, and Ryan's blocking it with his body. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Make Ryan's sure that people can see it. No, 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 out of frame. no. Now it's out of frame. No, that's pretty good. Oh. No, it looks good. It looks good. It looks cute. It's, it's good. We're good. All right. <laughs> He's here. He's right I'm here. here. He's got some recommendations tonight. We'll tell you guys what we've been smoking around the HQ. All right. I want to dive into a couple more comments. What are you guys wondering? Drop your cigar comments and questions down below. We'll chat about whatever you guys want cigars. There's obviously a lot going on in the world. And one of the reasons we love cigars is because they get us away from all of that, the catastrophe mm -hmm. of, uh, of our daily lives of our country's life and the things going on beyond. And so mm -hmm. uh, we're going to hit some headlines in just a couple minutes, but not before I get to some more of your comments. Let's do that, Billy. Put the next one on the screen right now. Uh, Jared Mose says, I normally smoke Connecticut, but don't really get any flavor notes. I broke out of Master Blends 3, mm. but I didn't taste any different. Really? Is there any cigars that you would recommend to help my pal? Can I take this one? Billy, I would love for you to, because ultimately my, my first thing is like, if you don't know, like if, if a Connecticut and a, and a Connecticut Broadleaf, which I think Master Blend is Connecticut Broadleaf. Yes. If those, if you take yes. no, no difference between the two of those. Uh, hey, welcome to the club, Jared. That's sort of like saying I drank water, but then I also drank gasoline. 
And I couldn't tell the difference. But all right, Billy, I, you got an answer for this. Go for it. Jared and everybody else said you're sitting at home going, yeah, that's me. Some of us cannot pick up flavor notes. I talk with Tim and Ryan and Terrence, and they all talk about the plump plums that they're picking up <laughs> and the leather notes that came from an ostrich in uh -huh. Australia. Yep. I don't get any of that. I know if it's an cigar... ostrich egg shell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get if the cigar is good or not good. However, there are a few cigars that I can pick up a little bit more flavor notes and I can pick up more on a master blends three that Ryan is smoking right now versus Connecticut. So Jared, I would you could, would you say your palate has begun to develop? I mean, this is really the key of it when it comes to smoking premium cigars. As you get into this, your palate should have a, a process of developing. Yes. Like if you just sit down and pick up a cigar and you're like, oh, yeah, I taste, you know, uh, you know, you know, uh, rock moss and, you know, all kinds of stuff. You might people might not trust you. But over time, most people eventually hit a cigar with like, oh, there I taste chocolate in this. I recommend the CAO Amazon for that or the CAO uh, Flathead for that. All, all mm -hmm. great cigars with good chocolate notes in them. Uh, but, but Billy, do you find that your palate is re weaving its way in it? Because you said now, you said with the yes. Master Blend 3, you do taste something different. What I have have to do is I'll lean over to Terrence and be like, what am I picking? I have to ask somebody what I'm picking up mm. to specifically look for those flavor notes. And then I can start picking them up. Yeah, and I'm gonna throw this up, Frankie. Frankie D, I can't get flavor notes either. Uh, you know, I, yeah, I'm 100 with Billy from Little Spence. Can't pick up nothing for flavor notes. Um, this is the the thing about flavor notes that I love is that they're they're a, a they're totally subjective. Mm -hmm. So the notes that you taste will be a little bit different note than the notes other people will taste. But also when somebody's like, yeah, blueberries, you may very well taste like a hint of a blueberry note in a cigar. And it's, and it, you know, to that degree, I think very different than some of the other tasting hobbies that there are like tasting wine or even tasting bourbon and whiskey. Like you sit down with a bourbon and they're like, Oh, this has got vanilla in it. And you're like, no, yeah, for sure. It's got, do you, yeah. Billy, do you, when you taste bourbon and whiskey, do you get flavor notes? I do. Mm. So you're not fundamentally I'm broken. Not fundamentally. And when I try foods, I can pick up all the different flavor notes and foods Spices that will give and you. Stuff like that. I just do not get cigar. Do you regularly uh, retro hell? Sometimes. I mean, I'll do it a few times throughout the night. So what you're saying is you're not committed. <laughs> well, because we all know that the tongue only tastes four flavors. The, the olfactory sensors are what gives you those other. I, I've so always, if you can't get a little bit through your nasal passages, that's really where you get the I notes. What I tend to do instead of retrohaling, because retrohaling always burns me out. Oh. I, when I'm, I breathe in through my note while I'm taking a draw, and then you get some off of the end of the cigar and that gets more flavor notes for me mm. Mm. Ah. Okay. all right i got one from eric scott on facebook he says that's a nope on notes for me unless it's barnyard mm. <laughs> is that what keeps you coming back eric he's just like oh man this mm. one's really barn smells like the state fair <laughs> which is you know i, I think is a monument to cigars it like truthfully when it comes to premium cigars the flavor notes and the profile and all that stuff. Did you guys just ash on each other? No. So <laughs> what, what had happened was. What's going on over there? What had happened was. I ashed on your keyboard. Oh. I blew it off of the keyboard, which made a big mess on the table. So I blew, but I blew <laughs> into the ashtray and blew it all over Terrence. <laughs> A lot of Sorry. blowing going on. Yeah. Like a Billy lot of blowing going on. I do so hard. I, I try so hard not to be ashy on this show. And then you're just going to blow ash on me, man. Normally, we try to a? keep the camera on me when there's that much blowing actually happening. But hey, <laughs> we promised you guys a good show. So here we are. All right. Just two guys blowing back. Just two guys going for it. Now, All right. Yeah. They both Billy, keep hats. scouring for those comments. Uh, and uh, oops, I grabbed that one instead of Darren's, which is like, oh, kinky. Uh, Eric says, I've been getting into osmosis inhaling. Huh? Uh, and. Uh, that where you hold in your mouth until the smoke is gone. Hold on. Let me read that one again. Eric Meyer. I've been getting into osmosis inhaling. That, he says, that's where you hold it in your mouth until the smoke's gone. This so, I legitimately feels like something you would tell your girlfriend to trick her. Just... <laughs> Hold it in your mouth till it's gone. But uh, <laughs> but truth be told, that doesn't sound good for you. I'm not gonna lie. I like I and I, I don't ever want to make health implications about cigars. I have to tell you, cigars are not good for you. 
but doing that does not sound i'm gonna do it really quick so we guys just retake a comment sure i'll do it with you this is from luke martineau tm any updates on unkillable so ready to get one of those in my hands <laughs> the face <laughs> Yeah, the, the smoke doesn't disappear. I don't know what, what Buddy's talking about. <laughs> it's still in there. I was it's just holding it. It's still in there. Are you swallowing it? I'm thinking he might be inhaling. I'm thinking he just <laughs> might be inhaling it. Um, The Unkillable. Uh, Yeah, so I got my samples of The Unkillable, and uh, they were not beloved. They were not beloved enough to be American Viking material. So we've gone back to the drawing board with samples. And, uh, and versus just getting a bunch of samples rolled up and sent off, you kind of have to let them rest and it takes a period of days. So there's going to be some time involved in this just to give you a heads up. But yes, I'm, I've got more samples coming. It's one that I, that I want to nail. You guys have heard some of this. If you watched my series on how cigars are made, uh, I went and talked to Ernesto Perez Carrillo III. And he told me how some of these blends they were working on took years for them to come up with. Mm. Uh, when you are separated by countries, I imagine it takes longer, but I don't think it's going to take us years to do this. So I got to get another round of samples. The blender down there is a great, amazing guy uh, who him and I have a great uh, rapport, especially when we blended the original American Viking. So I think that he'll take everything that I've given him in stride and say, all right, here's something better, different, closer to what you asked for. I, this year is the year of creating new cigars. I'm doing this now more than ever. And I, and I, I don't want to say I'm getting good at it cause I'm not. And I know that, but, uh, but I've had a lot of phone calls, even working with like, it's weird when you make cigars, especially when you do collaborations with, with other, with other manufacturers, which, you know, I'm doing a lot of these this year. I've, I've mentioned it during the after party, but just so you guys know, you can expect, uh, cigars coming from Oscar Valderez, uh, from Aganorsa, from Diesel Cigars, from uh, Oliva, from Dunbarton. Uh, along, those are just the ones off the top of my head that we're doing this year right now. And like that process is so much fun. Even just beyond American Viking, it's about creating the blend and creating the brand and the whole idea that comes with it. Like creating something that not only satiates the palate, but gives you a full experience. And so uh, I'm so excited about that. But uh, when it comes to American Viking, I just, I need more. I need more to smoke. I'm not. I wasn't. Nothing was like. Yes, this is it. So there you have it. All right, uh, Billy. I want another comment, and then we got to hit some headlines. This one is from Frankie Deuces. Ninety percent of the chat tried it, and we're all dead now. Thank you. I'm just imagining everyone just. <laughs> the chat the chat why our viewership dropping ahead. everything on the chat stops yeah we're just like oh my gosh what happened to we kill show? our audience everybody's still watching so we might as well continue the show all right i got a real question for you. all right okay, go for good, it good good gustavo fring thoughts on my father's tobacco bias sf terrence answered my question the other day but how would you describe that cigar what did you say terrence what did you say? What did you do? What is? <laughs> I don't like remember. A, he looked like a cartoon cowboy. He looked like a screen was frozen on just yeah. his side. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't remember. I, I, I just don't remember. I imagine you talk to a lot of people about these things. Yes. All um, right. Tobacco Spies. My father's cigars. This is a Cuban sandwich. <clears throat> and uh, I wish I had a picture to show it to you. Comes in a green box. And from the famed My Father's Cigars, you know, first of all, the cigars are incredibly consistent. And it's one thing I can say about tobacco bias. It's incredibly consistent for a Cuban sandwich. Cuban sandwiches use the chopped up leftovers from making other premium cigars. They put the leaves out on the table. They take a knife with a rounded blade. There might be a, round, a rounded blade knife in that little drawer right there. A chaveta. Is there one in there? There is. Yeah, just throw it at me. Ooh. I'm just kidding. Nope. So they take a knife that looks just like this. This is called a chavetta right here. This is a very rusty chavetta. And what they'll do is they'll they'll cut off little bits of that leaf to make it the right shape. And then they'll tear off little bits of the filler to fill it in. And uh, when they do that, they create short filler. That short filler will eventually become another cigar and much more affordable. That's what Tobacco Baez is. And that's one of the great things about it. You're getting my father's leaf. You're getting uh, my father's rollers. And it's just more affordable, around three or four bucks. With Tobacco Spies, to me, the one thing that stands out about it is that for a Cuban sandwich, which is not a specific blend, it's not like the Filthy Viking right here, which is a specific type of Habano wrapper, specific Honduran binder and fillers to this cigar. 
Unlike that, with a Cuban sandwich, you're just taking fistfuls of shreds from other cigars. It could be bunches of different kinds of cigars, and you're filling out a, a, a full-size cigar. Typically, those don't become very strong. You don't get a Cuban sandwich that's punchy and powerful with like a nice retro ale and a decent flavor. Tobacco Baez somehow manages to do just that. Like it's got some punch, a little bit of pep to its step, mm -hmm. and it's definitely got an interesting flavor profile. So I really like Tobacco Baez for that. And based on what my computer tells me, so do a lot of people. So <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I want to get back to your guys' cigar comments and questions. Billy's going to scour for them, so keep dropping them down below. Put Just drop them in anything you want to know about cigars. We'll, we'll answer anything unless we don't know it. Then we'll tell you because we have that. We want to have that kind of integrity with you. But we haven't found anything yet, even when we're wrong, and sometimes we're wrong. Uh, but we got to dive into some Cigars Daily headlines. This is what's happening in Cigars Today. I've got two headlines. I grabbed both of these because these are overwhelmingly great, positive headline, although... I'm not going to lie. The first one is sort of confusing. Okay, take a look right here. This one is from Half Wheel. Uh, this is where I get my cigar news. Missouri tobacco preemption bill introduced. Now, nobody else in the room knows what the hell that is. I, yeah, I don't know what Missouri I, is. <laughs> <laughs> What's, What's a Missouri? Missouri? <laughs> um, uh, and once again, I, I just, I, I don't define people of Missouri. I don't want to insult you, but I keep looking at all these flags from States and countries all over the world. And for some reason to me, they just look like a bunch of clip art. But anyway, I digress. I'm sure it has incredible depth and meaning to it. Very popular. It looks like two bears hitting on each other. So it does like, like, what's that? up, man. They're I'm like, holding. So how often you come here? How, how often you come here to Missouri? <laughs> uh, if, if you had to take a guess at what a tobacco preemption bill was, I'm going to pull the room. What would you say that it is? Billy, I want to say preemption is when you are allowed to buy cigars and they're doing what everyone else is trying to do right now and extend the year. Well, because Tim said this was going to be good news. Huh. I did give away far too much, but, but you think it could have to do with the age that you buy. So they're preemptive. I don't want to say that. It's a preemptive strike, but but it's just what it conjures to your mind. Yeah, that's what it. So in your mind, it's that. All right. Terrence, I think it's a bill. Oh, oh yeah. Go, go for it. Right. It's just a bill that kills another bill. A bill that kills another bill or oversees it or over overrides it. A preemptive say. strike. Pre yeah, right, right. It overrides another bill. That's it. All right. That's my guess. Taxes. That's all that's all I would think of taxes. <laughs> it's gotta have something to do with money, right? <laughs> yeah, taxes. There's less taxes. Yay. Terrence's <laughs> one word answer is somehow the most informed answer that there is. Like anytime a bill comes out, if you just say taxes, you're gonna be right. Like that's the most right that you can ever be. Uh, okay, so here's what it is. The state of Missouri has put out this, uh, introduced this bill that would preemptively strike any city, state, or county from creating a law or a ruling more strict than what the state of Missouri has set as a state. Mm. So like, for instance, if the state of Missouri says uh, flavored cigars are allowed, no city no county can say we're going to outlaw flavored cigars, okay. which it's, you know, it's very, and it's very interesting that this happens right now because right now is when you see cities and counties who are starting to outlaw flavored stuff. And we've talked about those in the past weeks, although there are commonly exemptions for premium cigars in these, thank God, and there should be. Uh, but this is, this is the city, but what, this is the thing that blew my mind about this. You guys can read more about this on half wheel. If you want to, I think the article was written by Charlie Minato. I love that dude. Uh, the thing that strikes me is this. Why? Like, why are they doing that? That's such a bizarre piece of legislation. It doesn't benefit the politicians to do that. I And in my mind, this is all I think. It doesn't benefit the corporations to do that. If it doesn't benefit, if it doesn't create a create more taxes, Terrence, thank mm -hmm. you. If it doesn't create, you know, popularity for politicians and if it doesn't create benefits for corporations, and there's there's no substantial benefit to corporations for making this law, especially not big tobacco, who doesn't really have a voice anymore. So why would you do something like that? It's a, it seems like kind of a bizarre one to me, but kind of a cool move. And if you live in Missouri, at least you know that your your town's mayor isn't going to be like, hereby I from this day forward, I do declare, I do declare, no more cigars that taste like vanilla. Vanilla killed my mother in an accident when I was five. 
So there you go. <laughs> she was rolled like, over by a vanilla barrel. Rolled over by a vanilla barrel. We lost her in the winter of 69. Nice. All right. Billy, uh, do you got any comments? I got a comment. <laughs> I'm going to have to. I can't put it up. But it's a valid comment. Is that a problem you're commonly having? <laughs> <laughs> have you heard about hymns? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. Big on hymns. Dude, every app that I'm in, Facebook and TikTok and all that, all of them show me a bunch of ads for hymns now. And I have no clue why. It's not, it's not like I sit around with Allison. She's like, I just really, really wish you could pull that up more. I'm like, well, I, I don't know what to tell you. Not a problem I have. <laughs> right, right. Or blue chew. Comment, but I found a better one. You found a better one. Oh, good. Terry Rowe. Mike Rowe's brother, surprisingly. Terrence looks like the mayor from the Fairly Odd Parents. You saying I look like Dub Dimmodome, <laughs> <laughs> owner of the Dimmodome? <laughs> you kind of do. I, I said earlier Marty McFly out of uh, out of Ghetto Back to the Future 3 is what I said. Strictly. And then I just said I was just McFly with this. Yeah, so, I, And yeah. that was a great comeback because you are very McFly. All right. Um, let's keep going. Right, if this you got, is from I got one more headline, but I want to take another comment. Oh, no, take your you do your show. <laughs> Thank I'll, you, Billy. I'll Go ahead, Tim. Your permission <laughs> is all I needed. All right. The next headline this is a big deal, especially if you're a big fan of cigars. You're freaking out about the latest, greatest new thing from the top names in the cigar world. The last few years, we've seen a ton of collaborations, especially since Judge uh, Meta shot down the FDA's. Uh, deeming rules over cigars and said that we can continue to make new cigars. All these cigar people are getting together behind closed doors and doing whatever Terrence does to get that hat. And they, uh, they come up with some incredible new projects. And this is one of them. Look forward to this one coming up very soon. Uh, first, my father and Tatuaje La Union collaboration nears release mm. this one doesn't need hymns it's going to release all on its own and uh so this is the box this is what it looks like get ready for the sticker shock on this one they're like three thousand twenty four hundred three thousand dollars a box what is it i have to do math now oh no i think they're twenty four hundred dollars a box because they're 60 times 40 yeah twenty four hundred bucks for a box of these bad boys uh, inside the box, 20 cigars from my father, 20 cigars from Tatawahe total collaboration on the blends. Uh, absolute crazy, crazy project. And of course I got some for my humidor comes with a limited edition cutter. I can't wait for this one. I jumped all over this when it came up. All right, Billy, get some more comments. So the good news in the cigars world headline, cool new stuff coming out. And of course uh, the TPE trade show is next week. Jim and I are getting prepared to go off to that. So we'll be spending a few days in Vegas. I'll be working to make a video. And uh, so this should be a great time to see all the new stuff that's coming out, uh, especially during a really weird year for cigars. So mm. see what happens. It's going to be a weird year because we got two trade shows now back to back. But they're collaborating like, okay, what are we doing, Billy? R3. Tim always says that Cubans are just grass and hay. I, I didn't say they're just grass and hay. I said that the common flavor note is pretty much grass and hay. You're not wrong when most. For those of us who've never had one, could you please recommend some New World cigars that capture the essence of the Cuban flavor profile? Terrence? Yes. I want to hear from you on this first, dude. Two recommendations. One's going to be the Gran Habano 20th anniversary, where Ooh. there's going to be grass, hay, and a little bit of nuttiness, even though I don't know what nuts taste like. And then... Um, Your truck stop says otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> don't leave me hanging. Don't leave me oh. hanging, Billy. Yeah, and the other um, one is going to be the Re Reserva Real from Romeo and Julieta. That's just a really quintessential beginners. That's where all that grass and hay really goes. It's almost like a vegetal note, but still going to be right there for a great, smooth, enjoyable cigar. All right. And, I, and I'll and i say this. Terrence legitimately does have a nut allergy and and is on Benadryl right now. So I think you should all like give him major props and respect for doing this show because he came in contact with a product that was made in a facility that also processes nuts and puts those nuts into the food that you consumed last night, I think. Yeah, uh, it was just, uh, I wasn't really thinking and I just kind of. Luckily you spit and didn't swallow. Oh yeah. I'll, I'll, I quit right that's then good, and there. That's a good point. That's a great point. All right. Uh, 
let's see what's going on. What's going on in the comments? Let's get them. We got all our headlines. We got to pick of the week to do, and then we got to make some recommendations here. Yeah. So I can't put this one up, but it's the first person to notice it. And it's from Modern Mixologist. Wish you could put it up, but there's some phrases in here that we can't say. When will we be able to get the Billy Chicken selfie sticker on his laptop? Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, right, right and there. I left that, that in there. They've landed. Uh, Billy's chicken stickers have landed. Uh, I guess and you could say they've been laid here. Yeah, they've been laid. So this now, <laughs> this is a thing now. And uh, I finally got them in. I was so excited. Uh, so Billy chicken stickers are here and uh, you, you can't buy them. But if people that want them can learn more about, you know, the cigars that uh, we're recommending tonight, some of the staff picks, some really great stuff from top cigar makers. We'll be telling you guys about those in just a second, but you can learn more about them. Uh, on the after party on Cigars Daily Plus. And of course, we'll tell you guys more about those uh, as well. Chicken sticker aren't are real. The chicken stickers are real. They are. Yeah. Yes. Go, go ahead and go to your camera real quick and we'll show it to them. Go ahead and give them a little sneak preview. There you go. Be on, I snuck it on the laptop right there. There you go. Billy's chicken sticker. That's so, oh, uh, it's going on my, on my, oh. Uh, on your hat, I hope. No, it's going on, <laughs> on, on my hat. disgusting Yeti thermos, bro. I'm good. I got to have a Billy sticker on there. Excellent. All right. Cool. I'm going to jump back over to the mainstream comments here. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, we're uh, yeah tired of the same orange sticker I get. Just so you guys know, I have revamped the sticker program mm. uh, at the Cigars Daily HQ, and all previous stickers are going away completely. Wow. And now there will be a new world of collectible stickers at the Cigars Daily HQ that we're going to be excited to share with you guys. So those will be coming down the pipes. Um, and I need to know, oops, Tim, did your eye surgery last up well from Joshua Dillenbeck? That's a great comment. Did your eye surgery last up well? Yeah. Heal up well? Because you're getting like punched in the head mm -hmm. and the what's their traditional one? LASIK. Okay. LASIK. So yeah, I got LASIK, but because I fight, I, I got PRK LASIK, which I guess is just old school LASIK. At some point, they they realized that, uh, and I'm going to bring this back to how this has gone with cigars. At some point, they realized they could cut your lens Ooh. and then fold it back and then shoot the laser right into your retina. And if they do that, then they can fold the lens back over and it'll heal. And it, and it takes like a day. It's like a in and out. You're like, bing, bang, boom, you're done. But, if, but then there's a seam on your lens. And if you get hit in the face real hard, it can tear the lens and then you get a whole situation. So I was talking with uh, Benson Henderson, uh, who owns a, an MMA gym out here, UFC fighter. And he said, no, you don't want LASIK. You need PRK. Where they don't cut the lens, they laser straight through the lens into your retina, and it just burns the bejesus out of your lens. And so it takes like weeks for it to heal. Now, it has healed really well. My vision is like 2015 or something like that. I can read stuff that you know, my wife can't even see. And, uh, and you know, now I've discovered it takes a little bit longer to heal smoking cigars. So I gave myself instead of five weeks, I gave myself 10 weeks to fully heal, but I use a lot of eye drops. And, and like the first time I went back and fought a dude hit me in the face and it felt like someone threw sand in my eyes. I mean, it was really painful. We didn't stop the round, but I'm blinking at this guy and it's like, Oh, like when you're in a fight and you know, the guy's looking at your weakness cause you're doing this a whole bunch. You're like, uh Oh, <laughs> this isn't good. Uh, that, that has been my experience, but now it's a lot better. I just find my eyes get dry a little bit quicker and especially when I'm around the smoke and dear God, when smoke gets in my eye and if you've had this experience, you'll know you're sitting there smoking a good cigar. You take a puff off the cigar and the smoke, you guys remember from Fern Gully? That that oil monster and the smoke would like during the song is like, I'm a smooth one. <laughs> and it like it just wind its way. Up. Like the smoke comes out of your mouth and it goes straight into your eye. When that happens now, the pain that's associated with smoke going into my eye is a new sensation. And that makes me cry. That makes me cry. OK, there you go. Original Jimbo. How long do you have to wait to have a cigar after LASIK? Zero minutes is the exact number of times. I, I think I left the LASIK plate. No, my eye, because my eyes were so bad. I They put like, they put ointment into my eyeball, like wrap my face and I had to go home and lay down. Did you look like a uh, uh, Hal from Shallow Hal when you didn't want to yeah. see her? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He all the boss leave. Yeah. Nice. sent me a photo and it looked like the worst pink eye. 
that I've ever seen on somebody. It was Ooh. all goopy and Ooh. got it at a truck stop. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was pretty incredible, incredible pain, but I'm so glad now. And I'm, I'm all registered for a fight. So I'm hoping to be able to do that. I'm hoping to be able to bring some fighting to you guys, by the way. Uh, and that's something I'll be talking about later. We'll chat about it in the after party and then on a live show once I've got better plans out in front of me. All right. We got to dive into a segment we do every week here on the show. Keep posting your cigar comments and questions. Billy's getting the best ones. Uh, this segment we do every week on the show called the Cigars Daily Nation Pick of the Week. Um, still cold outside. You guys are still trying to find a way to have a good cigar while it's cold. And I saw this crazy video today where this guy was talking about the, how Coca-Cola did this. Coca-Cola at one point noticed that nobody was really drinking Coke during the winter. The, 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 the tasty sugary beverage was associated with the warmer summer months. So this guy says that Coke basically accused him of going to the Catholic church and pulling this old holiday called Christmas out of the attic, dusting it off, associating it with St. Nick, and then putting Santa Claus on the can, which sounds a little too like, like DEPCON 1 conspiracy theory to me. But certainly Coke played off of the, of the Christmas thing with their polar bears and a lot of the stuff that they did. Uh, I personally, during the winter, like it's tough to smoke a cigar because it is so cold outside, especially if you don't smoke in your house. But I'm so happy about people who are doing this. If you want to make cigars part of your winter life, this is a great way to do it. Check this out. This is from the Cigars Daily Nation Facebook group. This one's from Robert B. He says, cigar tent ready. Thanks, Tim, for mentioning this idea in your videos. Going with my favorite tonight. And this is two, there's two sides to this picture on the, on the right side. You can see that he's holding a Sobre Mesa brulee mm -hmm. with what look like tailor cut fingernails, by the way, if this man doesn't get a manicure, I don't know. Maybe he just uses a lot of lotion on those hands <laughs> looking really good. And he's got himself a nice warm, uh, space heater right there inside what appears to be one of those Eskimo tents. And he's got some, some lights hanging from the top, but here's what I got to say. Very nice feng shui. And the fact that he threw down a cowhide on the ground makes it nicer than I think a lot of places people are actually sitting in their living rooms right now. Like you're looking around your living room like, I don't have a cowhide in my living room. It's bull. 100% a female helped him with the decoration in there. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. He brought his wife out. He's like, all right, can we... Uh, She's like, no, it's not good enough. <laughs> the corner, there's like the little wine bottle and like a little... It like looks snacks like or dirt. Snacks <laughs> or dirt. That is and a candle. A little blanket. That is a candle. And I don't want to out him uh, because I wondered if maybe it was a bottle of lotion. And so I went on Facebook <laughs> and I zoomed in really close to that picture. And if you are in the Facebook group, you can go zoom in and see exactly what's sitting on that nightstand. And I will tell you, I did not blow it up for this episode because I did not want to get a channel strike. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Now that's off. That's off the screen. <laughs> uh, now it's off the screen and it's gone. Uh, okay. We've got to talk about some top cigar recommendations. I want to take some more of your guys' comments. We're going to dive into that in just one minute. Billy, grab a couple of comments from the fine people at home. Uh, and I'm going to grab this one. James A. Smith says, a man with a manicure like that doesn't need a woman to decorate. And he's not wrong about that. If you're if you're paying that close attention to the how well-maintained your hands are, and mine are not very well-maintained. Me neither. Yeah, no. Although I'll say Allison does a great job. I can pretty much give Allison any space and she makes it the best that it can be. She's got a good sense for that. I'm a big fan. All right. Billy, get us another good one. Uh, mature black man says in the midst of doing taxes while smoking and sipping. It seems like a bad recipe. That no. see at, at first glance, that seems like a bad recipe. But when well, you look get that $40,000 tax return. Maybe it's a good idea. Maybe it's a good idea. They carry See, the one. Look, at, look, look at the name. He's a mature black man. He's not going Terrence Christmas episode with it. He's just <laughs> having a little bit of relief distress, you know. Probably not his first rodeo. He's probably been doing it for a while. Probably been doing it for a while, man. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Billy, jump up with the most recent comments. I know mature black man put that in the show much earlier, but. All right. Um. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, I see some good. I'll star some for you as well, Billy. Um, there you go. Adrian Gonzalez, Tim, you're, you're a big fan of diesel cigars. What do you think of whiskey row? What do I think of the whiskey row? That's what made me fall in love with diesel. I mean, I'd had diesels before. I've always liked the fact that diesel was bold. So in my journey in cigars, and a lot of you guys are like this, you go through cigars 
and your your palate kind of makes its way through different lands of cigars. Like you go to Disneyland and you go to Tomorrowland and you go to the pedophile land, you go to all the different lands. <laughs> and uh oh my God. <laughs> and you were Dude. worried about a strike. I'm doing oh. my best here. I'm doing my best. The sad thing to- tickets to Disneyland are more expensive. They're more expensive than the kids. And uh so you you uh you go to all these different lands, your palate takes you there though. And so a lot of people start off in Connecticut Shade Land or flavored and infused land. And then eventually they find themselves in a dark back alley of Connecticut broadleaf land. And there's a guy sitting in the corner with dreads and a cowboy hat. And he's like, what's happening, brother? Welcome to broadleaf land. Uh, and who are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so as you find that your palate takes you into different spaces of the cigar world, God, now I've lost complete sense of the comment here. Billy, did you stop the comment? What was I even talking about? No, I think you pulled that one. <laughs> did I pull that one? Oh, the diesel question. Yes. I spent so much time in Connecticut land, just loving mild, creamy, smooth, light cigars. And uh, as I was doing that, I found that the first real diesel that I loved was the diesel whiskey row. It was much more medium. And I and because it was aged in whiskey barrel, I was really looking for that whiskey note, uh, which at first I didn't really get a, a huge amount of. I kind of found a little bit more of that later. But then when the sherry cask came out, that was kind of when I was making my way into a lot of more diversity of cigars and trying a lot more different things. The whiskey rose sherry cask is what really caught my attention. And after that, the diesel Esteli Puro and the mm-hmm. Boxer Grail Ooh. and all the other stuff. And now what I have in my possession, I only have three of these cigars, is uh, our collab cigar with diesel. And that right there is... It's the cigar. I, I mean, of everything I've smoked, and I haven't smoked all the test blends that are coming out uh, that we're putting out this year. That is the one I am. I am, think I might be the most excited about. It's just so rich, Breed. so dark, so strong, so good. Uh, yes, that yes. that's going to be a yeah. Mm-hmm. Terrence, you've had it, right? Yeah. No, I, I'm, I, I was going to ask if I could have another one, but I can I, I could be patient. But one of those might go missing. If you can beat me in a fight, you can have one. He already beat you in a race. <laughs> Dude, oh. we literally had a foot race, and Terrence beat me in a foot race. It was 40, it was 40 yards, and I was catching up with him. So I like to say it there was it, it was a photo finish. It was it, it was it was close. I would say it was close. I gapped him at the start, but he started catching up to me. But the, the all who cares about the winner because you gotta do a distance race around the entire parking lot. Oh, yeah. No, he's he's I've got a nice there. seven mile course we can do. After this, Terrence, <laughs> you after said the show. I, I'm dead after two. <laughs> All right, Tim cheated because he's aerodynamic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wore jeans, basketball shoes, and I know, I had Terrence's hair. <laughs> dreads were bouncing. They really were bouncing. In the video, you hear nothing but my rings and necklaces <laughs> jingling, and our feet slapping the ground. I'm gonna grab this one real quick from Facebook. Andrew Keller says, "If I use a cigar air purifier in my garage, will my wife notice the cigar smell?" No, not the first time. I mean, after a couple of days, it'll air out. But the more consistently you do it, the more that smell will kind of linger on your stuff. And it really will have to do with how well you ventilate the space. Have an air purifier in there, but also you can get your garage door to go up about one foot and prop it there. Put a couple of fans under there blowing the smoke out. That will help a tremendous amount. It doesn't. What? No, it, no I've Come done on. It. No, I've done it. And my wife walked in and went... <laughs> You've been smoking in here. Like, yeah, come on. Not even 30 Couldn't even get away in. with it? No. So the more you ventilate, it doesn't help. Are you not allowed to smoke in your garage? The washer and dryer is in there. See, and there's your problem. Ah, okay. Your wife's got her Christmas decorations in there. She's got the Halloween decorations in there. She's got decorations for holidays you didn't even know existed. Flag day. Yeah, flag day <laughs> decorations. All right, uh, it's time to get into some staff picks. Keep dropping your guys' cigar comments and questions down below. Billy's going to scour for them. He's going to bring us the best ones. And uh, I want to dive right into this. Here's the key. So there are uh, there's a lot of cigars that get a lot of hype out there. And tonight, we don't want to talk about the most hyped cigars because the danger is they get overhyped. And then they can just never possibly live up to what you want them to be. I'm thinking about the the number one cigar on everybody's top 25 list this year 
there doesn't stand a ghost of a chance as being as good as you hope that it will be once it's already reached the number one status and you've seen all the posts about it on Instagram, Facebook, and everyone's mm-hmm. like, oh my gosh, it's so good in my mouth. So we're going to tell you about some of our favorite cigars and why. And I'm going to kick this off and we're going to go around. We're just going to hit two of these, but you guys can learn more about these on the community on Cigars Daily Plus. I don't have a thing for this. Uh, You can learn more about each of these cigars on the community on Cigars Daily Plus. Uh, That's where we really want to bring you the value. So first one I will take. It's the cigar I'm smoking tonight. Uh, This one doesn't. I I don't think this is going to super surprise anybody, but it's the American Viking Cigars. Filthy Viking. Good job on the blend, Billy. This is. Thank you. This is. (laughs) Damn it. (laughs) <laughs> Billy, thank you. Yeah, very much. Oh my god. Uh, so the Filthy Viking is my blend and and has been for the most of a decade now. Like I I it's and like I said, I spent so much time in cigars getting into blends that were milder, smoother, creamier. This is a Habano wrapper with Honduran binders and fillers, which is which is very different than this like if I had to make a, a key like ticket Desert Island cigar for myself today, I'd probably be looking for something broadleaf, but I still go back to and love the Filthy Viking for the incredible, like, lush and creamy smoke that it gives. This yeah. buttery note that I get off of this cigar. It's still my Desert Island cigar that I love so much. So the Filthy Viking is one of mine. Uh, if I, if I, <clears throat> especially when people come into the Cigars Daily HQ and I get to talk to them, they're asking for recommendations. They've never smoked anything before. Uh, I typically show them the Filthy Viking and say, like, this blend is sort of will introduce you to a whole world, even if you're stepping out of Connecticut, into a whole world of, like, mild to medium flavor with some different kinds of flavor notes than what I yeah. typically find in a Connecticut. Uh, this is a cigar that, that first, when I smoked the blend, truly captured my palate and gave me that aha moment. Then, as I've made my way into a lot stronger blends, like the stuff that really, really slaps, like high power blends, and I want something really dark, I've pulled out AJ Fernandez New World Puro Especial. Welcome to so, the dark side, Tim. This is, oh man, this is, mm-hmm. uh, I love this cigar. So, mm-hmm. all Nicaraguan tobacco from AJ Fernandez. This cigar absolutely crushes it for strength. Yep. For black pepper, for leather, still has a really nice sweetness to it. I'm going to be lighting one up tonight before the show is over. I cannot wait. Uh, I love dark, bold, complex cigars, and that's what I'm getting out of the New World Puro Especial. And I love these two worlds. If you go back to the Filthy Viking, if you want something creamy and smooth, or you want something really dark and really powerful like the Puro Especial, there it is. Uh, there, there are so many cigars coming out in these two categories. Like if you want something that's kind of like middle of the road, kind of whatever, there's not a ton of stuff coming out. But if you live in one of these two worlds where it's really mild or really bold, there's so much coming out for you right now. It's just, it, there's not a better time to be a cigar smoker. All right, Billy, I want to hear about experiences. I want to hear what you guys, what gives you guys uh, the, the oogly googlies with these cigars, but these two are yours. Yours? Or are we talking about ours now? Yours. Look, look at your. Oh, screen. This is your record. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I was looking at you and not my screen. <clears throat> All right. First up is the Poco Tiempos. <laughs> Dude, what happened? <laughs> when did this turn Poco into a, a tour at Universal Studios? <laughs> Am I watching BBS? Oh, yeah. You'll see the house where they filmed you all those murders. Poco Tiempos. Poco Tiempos. Yeah, Poco can. Tiempos a little bit more. On the lighter side. So then you say Poco Tiempo. Poco ti- Sorry, I didn't say Poco Tiempo is correct. You sound Poco, like a librarian. Poco it's Poco in the mystery tiempo. section. You'll find that next to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> you all know that I've been going hard on cheroots for a number of years now. I've switched over to Poco Tiempos due to time. All these fools over here are enjoying to smoke cigars and have plenty of time in the day. I'm running everything at Cigars Daily HQ, so I don't <laughs> as have the CEO. Day, as the CEO. Why were you at your yacht yesterday then? <laughs> <laughs> so Billy, I, and, and by the way, Billy is, for uh, insurance purposes, technically not a cigar smoker. So these are actually helpful for that. That is true. <laughs> but I got my two Poco Tiempos right here that I'm going to light up. I like the Maduro and the Connecticut. Yes. Yep. As someone who doesn't like like dark, peppery stuff, that Maduro is still good for you. 
it has no pepper on it. No pepper. Very smooth, yeah. but you get the fun part of Maduro. You get the chocolatey. You get mm-hmm. those coffee notes. You get notes said. on Poco Tiempos. I will say I get notes on Poco Tiempos. It's your very basic ones, the darker flavors. The excellent. Yeah. yeah. No. All right. And then you talked about this cigar the other week, and I was like blown away. I was like, really? The Nub Cameroon. What? Tell me again about the Nub Cameroon, because you so, were like you you picked this. It was last week in the pick of the week. I said one's got to stay and one's got to go. And you said the Nub Cameroon Nub, stayed. Nub and this Cameroon. dude had like in this collection on the screen that we showed, there was like Liga Profadas and Padrones and those kinds of. And Billy's like Nub Cameroon's got to stay. So the first time I had a Nub Cameroon, spring night, kids were jumping on the trampoline, and I had a nice whiskey, and I had the Nub Cameroon, and. It's like chasing the dragon. Okay. It like yeah. it hit it, yeah. it, it all. I was tasting flavor notes that night. Everything was coming through and I've loved it ever since. So that's what I'm smoking tonight. Nubs last longer than you think. Me and Terrence started at the, <laughs> stop it. Terrence. We started at the same time and we're both about halfway. Yeah. We're both about halfway. Yeah. It, it does fit. And, and what they say about nub is that it's the fillet of the cigar, right? If it, and I talk about this in my reviews, the f- first, you know, inch of a cigar is typically flavor development. And then the last third of the cigar, the flavor all kind of congeals. They sort of just take that middle part of the cigar, the best part of the cigar. That's what nub is meant to be. Mm-hmm. And so it is full flavor immediately from light ups. One of the best things about nub, uh, really, really great cigar. All right. Thank you, Billy. So Billy's recommendations are Pocos Tiempos and the uh, Nub Cameroon. I put up the Filthy Viking, the Habano, and then the New World Puro Especial. And the next one, Ryan's going to speak up because his bike is a little quiet tonight. Hello. Can everybody hear me now? Just Just just, shout. Just be him at the mic. Yeah. (laughs) Let's go with this one. All right. We're going to go with the Master Blends 3, which is what I'm smoking right now. Um, I just think this is a really good. It it says medium to full. I, I think it's more of a medium. Uh, for being a Connecticut broadleaf, which I found out I had a type, and Connecticut broadleaf is it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just a good balanced cigar, and it's got that little bit of sweetness, a little bit of the the baking spice I like on the retro hail. I feel like when you say that Connecticut broadleaf is your type, that's like guys who say they're into redheads. <laughs> like you, like you, you like them a little bit crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. yeah. It's just a good balanced cigar with, with and Ooh, I, yes. I don't, I don't care for the pepper so much, and it. I don't taste any pepper in it. I'm not sure if other people do, but it's just a good overall smooth medium to full is what it's uh, touted as, but I think it's more of a medium. And I I love those baking spices, that and little may- bit of sweetness that doesn't overtake anything, doesn't yeah. overshadow anything else, just kind of blends with, I get a lot of complexity from this cigar. I think that was like one of the, one of the great underrated cigars for Oliva. Their most popular blend is the Oliva Serie V. Followed by the Milanio. And I think the Serie V is great. I like the Serie V Maduro a little better these days. But the Master Blend 3 sits somewhere in between the V and the V Maduro. It's mm-hmm. like in terms of strength. But still, yeah, really, really well balanced. Really great profile. What was your second one? Let's throw it up there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. What Terrence was it? Me. Well, <laughs> it was uh, the Illusioni uh, Singulare. Uh, I, I prefer the Corona size, actually. But that same thing. It's 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 really to me. It's kind of close to this. I don't even know what the rep, what's the wrapper on that one. It's a Habano Rosado. It's a Triple Habano, a Rosado. Grade Habano Rosado. It's so, a but very it's, interesting cigar. Again, medium flavor. I I I I do Connecticut's. I do medium to full. I do really dark cigars as well. But that one, I guess I kind of live in the middle, which is apparently where not a lot of people don't live <laughs> with cigars. <laughs> but I again, very similar to this one, and and it's got a very complex flavors but not overbearing in anything and just an overall enjoyable smoke. Dude, I yes. think that, so Singulari was for me also one that captured my palate, gave me that aha moment, like that, exactly what Billy said, chasing the dragon type thing. Like once I smoked a Singulari for the first time, uh, I was like, I got to get more of that. Mm-hmm. And I've loved that cigar ever since. Uh, and truthfully, I'm glad that you like it as much. I'm glad that you picked it for tonight's show because uh, Singulare is a cigar that to me is for, like, just like you said, as far as a medium strength cigar goes, not a lot of stuff hitting that's medium strength and not a lot of stuff that's medium strength that hits is so good as this. So yeah. uh, I was like, there was a period of time, like four months where Illusion was just out of this thing. And I don't know if it was the boxes or the bands or a leaf in the blend or something like that that kept them from being able to produce it. But now that it's back, I'm like so thankful because it feels like it feels like 
you know, as far as chasing the dragon goes, I, I have that thing that I want. You got it by its tail, at least. <laughs> now I can, yeah, yeah, I got it by its tail. Now I can continue looking for the next, like, mind blowing. Nom, nom, nom. All right. Terrence. Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. Well, what we do have we have guesses on Terrence? Coming. Oh, we got guesses. I want to oh, hear okay. some guesses yeah, from, let's, the, let's, from the audience. Let's out You're what all right. Blade, Blade Waters. <laughs> Electric. <The> Terrence, Bugle. <laughs> Terrence recommends El Rey Del Mundo and El Rey Del Mundo 2 Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> you guys that seen breaking right you guys seen breaking and breaking two electric of, of okay. course Good. great great uh, are there any other uh guesses on what terrence is going to be i feel like there's a few but that was the best one that was everything the best was one. el rey de mundo all right well well terrence what is your first recommendation well my first recommendation is going to be this the monte cristo what? espada in the oscuro just because i love I just love Monte Cristo, the Placencia tobacco in there. It's one of those collaborations that a lot of people don't know about, but it's so balanced. You get chocolatey notes, a little bit of hint of leather with some nuttiness going on. I smoke this thing all the time. The ash always stays about half the cigar, no matter what size. I don't know how they do it, but it's just a phenomenal blend. I can't get enough of this cigar. And it's just one that I keep coming back to, and I've got to have a few in my humidor at all times. Haven't had very many of the signatures, but the Espada is still good. I see a lot of people love that Espada Oscuro. Oh my gosh, look at there that. What do we have? There it is. What also I got to say, it's got chocolate, it's got leather, it's got earth. It is definitely going to have some of that. It's not going to break spike. the banks. Not By the way, if you're really listening to the podcast, there is now an El Rey Del Mundo there's on the screen. There's an El Rey on the, on, the, on the screen right now, y'all. You do not understand how great this cigar is. <laughs> I will clip this and put this on my Instagram to tag <laughs> El Rey Del Mundo because I want them to cut me a check eventually. But this cigar right here changed my life. It got me out of debt. It made me marry my girl. <laughs> Changed my life. <laughs> Changed I my saw life. the light. <laughs> no, but it's just a great $7 cigar. There's nothing wrong with it. Yes, it's $7. It's not going to burn perfectly. It's not going to be the most balanced. But for a broadleaf with all Honduran tobacco that doesn't break the bank, yes, I would love this cigar. It's everything that I need. Amazing. All right. So those are some of our best. Is that the Oscuro? Yes, it is. The Oscuro. Okay. Very good. And it is the El Rey Oscuro as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, lots of really good cigars out there, guys. And we're going to head over to the after party in just a few minutes where we can talk a little bit more freely about this. This is on our community on Cigars Daily Plus, where you guys can learn more about our recommendations, even some more recommendations uh, from the folks here at the Cigars Daily HQ. We love cigars. We get up every morning and we love cigars all day long. And then we go home to our families who we love Slightly more than cigars. Nah. But cigar nah. Nah. <laughs> Not more than the El Rey Del Mundo. No. Nope. Um, well, we'll be talking to you guys more about it on the uh, after party. Just so you guys know, our community on Cigars Daily Plus is a free place to be. It like signing up is your name, a username, an email, and a password, and then you're in. And our after party, it's like the living room of our show. Uh, so head over there, get a space in line. We run it on our own server, so it takes a little bit of time to get in. Uh, but we'll be hanging out with you guys over there. And I'm curious, Billy, I want to grab uh, a few more comments from people who are watching. So give me a couple of those. I'm going to take one really quick from Drew Kelsey. Tim, do you smoke Boxster Grill after a fight? Uh, I don't. But I will tell you, after I've fought somebody, the next cigar that I'm going to smoke after that is a, it's like a special one for me. It's got to mm. be something particularly choice. It's a lot of diesel vintage series. Mm. Uh, it master blends yes. last night, literally last night I smoked a diesel vintage series followed by a master. Blend. No knuckle buster. No, no, no knuckle buster. No, no knuckle sandwich. The knuckle sandwich is choice after a good, after a good nine rounds of sparring. I don't want to say I haven't had a fight in years. Uh, I've, I'm signed up again for USA boxing, so I should be able to have a fight soon, but I do a lot, a lot of sparring these days. I'm trying to get in about nine to 12 rounds a week. So okay. if I can do that, I'm doing pretty good. All right. Uh, Gianni says, I need a few Padron killers. Uh, I don't think Padron would appreciate very much if I did that list, but there's some really, I mean, I think if you're looking for like cigars that bat up against Padron, there are a few out there that are holding their own in that sphere. And like the Padron, uh, I'm sorry. Per Placencia Alma Fuerte is one of them. Yep. That cigar is just fire. Smooth as a 1926, but has a little bit more darkness and depth to it, even than the Maduro does. Yep. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff out there. We can talk more about that another time. All right, Billy, grab me uh, another one. Another good comment. Yeah. This one's from Woody. Hey, I got a question, please. 
I'm just starting and I want to buy good cigarillos to smoke a few daily. What would you would suggestions? What would be your suggestions? Okay. Poco Tiempo's next to the bathroom. There you go. <laughs> now you sound like an airline uh, stewardess. Yeah. If you go to the Poco Tiempo's on the side, you'll find them over there. <laughs> and your seat doubles as a flotation device. But um, seriously, Poco Tiempo's. Poco Agreed, Tiempo's yeah. are great. You know, that's why we made them a part of the sort of the Amer- American Viking world. I'd say if you want, you know, you when you're looking for cigarillos, you're looking for a brand that does a really good uh that does a really good job of of paring down a full size blend into a small package with the same flavor. Mm-hmm. Drew Estate does this reliably well. Yes. The Undercrown Coronets, the Liga Pravada Coronets all do a great job with that. Yep. Uh, Camacho does it really well with their Machitos. And if you want something high class for a small cigar, Winston Churchill Davidoffs yes. are very good. And they just released the Winston Churchill late hour, a Davidoff late hour in the Winston Churchill short panatella size. Uh, I mean, you're going to spend for a, for basically a half Corona, 10 bucks, but I mean, what do they, what does a full size one cost? 30 or 40 bucks? About depending on where you're at is going to be between 34 and $43. Yeah. So there you go. Use a fraction of the price, even though more expensive than all the other little guys out there. And then, uh, Arturo S says Arturo Fuente, a short story for a short, small cigar, uh, would be a great way to go. Okay, guys, we are going to head over to the after party on Cigars Daily Plus. Please join us there. We'll continue taking all of your comments. Otherwise, stay tuned for another amazing episode next week. And thank you so much for joining us. This is Tim and the whole crew signing off, and we'll see you on the after party. Bye-bye now.